Good morning, America. Breaking news. Deadly volcano eruption. A volcano fire explodes, killing dozens, injuring hundreds in Guatemala. Ash clouds close in as families flee for their lives. Emergency crews searching for survivors. And the desperate race to escape in Hawaii. People stranded as the hottest lava yet moves in. Weather emergency coast to coast. Hell pummeling this plane's windshield in Texas, forcing an emergency landing. And 100 mile per hour winds destroying this airport hangar as major floods take aim at the east and dangerous wildfires roar out west. Breaking news, Facebook under fire. The new report. Has the company been sharing your info with Apple, Microsoft, and more? Dangerous dance off. An off-duty FBI agent busts a move when his gun drops and goes off, striking another party goer. The investigation right now. Steph Curry breaking a record with these three. Oh, he knocks it down! Leading the Warriors to a huge win. Can LeBron and the Cavs bounce back before it's too late? Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. It's great to have you here with us, Amy. Thank you. And uh, what a night for Steph Curry last night. Yeah, the most threes ever in an NBA Finals game. Nine of them in the crowd, as you might imagine, in Oakland going wild. Yeah, they just pulled away in that fourth quarter yesterday. It was, it's almost unfair, but he's, he's not, he just throws them up when he's not even trying like that. Like that. <laughs> and it goes in. It's just one of those nights, and if you're the Cavs, you're just thinking to yourself, well, hopefully we can win at home next time. They are up against a wall right now. We have a lot of news to get to. We're going to begin with that breaking news. Devastating volcano eruption in Guatemala. It's called the Volcano of Fire near the popular tourist spot Antigua, and the eruption has killed at least two dozen people, injured hundreds more. You see the pictures right there. Ash over several cities in Guatemala right now. I want to go to ABC's Whit Johnson. He has all the latest. Good morning, Whit. George, good morning to you. A violent eruption of Guatemala's Fuego volcano has resulted in at least 25 deaths this morning, including three children, at least 300 others injured, a five-mile stream of red-hot lava exceeding 700 degrees flowing through towns there, black smoke and ash raining down everywhere in this catastrophic crisis. So far, more than 3,000 people have been evacuated, but as you can see from this video, it's almost impossible to outrun the thick haze of ash clouds blanketing the area. The volcano is about 25 miles southwest of Guatemala's capital city. Ash can cover a nine mile radius, causing extreme mudslides and rivers to overflow. This volcano's name means volcano of fire in Spanish. In this video taken last year after an eruption, the lava illuminates just the sheer size of this volcano. This explosion is expected to impact nearly two million people. George. Yeah, and they're likely to find many more injured. Okay, Whit. Also in Hawaii, that other volcano emerged right now uh, you have residents trapped this morning yeah George the Hawaii Civil Defense Service says that some residents were late moving out of the mandatory evacuation area near the Kilauea volcano and are now stuck with no power no cell reception or water authorities are now planning to airlift people out if the lava spreads farther in the four weeks since the lava began flowing from Kilauea it's covered five and a half miles the danger of volcanic smog known as bog also continues to be a major factor George it is just devastating okay what thanks for very much, Michael. All right, thank you, George. Now to that dangerous weather that is coast to coast, flooding in the east and wildfires out west. Take a look at flash flooding in the Washington, D.C. area, the raging water rushing down those stairs, and a fallen tree splitting a house in two. ABC's Gio Benitez is there on the scene with the very latest. Good morning to you, Gio. Oh, Michael, good morning. It's just incredible, isn't it? Apparently, this ground was so saturated here that this tree just fell right over. And we actually have a wide shot, so you can see how massive this tree actually is. You can see right through the house. It split it down the middle. That is actually the owner's bedroom right there. He left right before this thing fell. His nephew was down in the basement watching some TV. So just incredible, thankfully, that they were not hurt. They were out of the house. They were out of harm's way, at least. But boy, this was just one of the many issues we saw across this country. Overnight, a terrifying flight and urgent emergency landing after hard-hitting hail smashed the nose of this American Airlines plane in El Paso, Texas. We have virtually no forward visibility. 
facility. And cracked the cockpit's windshield. It started hailing, and you could just hear it on the plane, and the plane just dropped. It was so scary. Like, people started screaming. The 130 passengers on board clapping once they made it safely to the ground. This, as nearby in Arkansas, this airport hangar at Delta Regional Airport ripped apart. A hundred mile per hour winds tore through the area, and in Austin, 60 mile per hour winds overturning this trailer, several inside having to be rescued. <laughs> Meanwhile, out east, a weekend washout. This was the scene outside our nation's capital. Rain cascading down those steps. And in D.C., that massive tree splitting this home in half. Felt like an earthquake. Yeah, an earthquake, he says. Apparently, this whole property just started shaking. Now, the East Coast is going to dry up. That rain is now mostly gone. But Texas now faces some more severe weather. Michael. All right, thank you so much for that, Geo. And we're going to go to Ginger with the latest on those wildfires out west in the heat that is moving in. Good morning to you, Ginger. Good morning, Michael. Hot and dry. That's been the name of the game for the last couple of weeks, and it's really resulting in large wildfires. 11 of them from Colorado to this one here in New Mexico. It's northeastern New Mexico, where there are more than 36,000 acres are now burning. That is a large, large wildfire. Look at Laguna Beach, California. Their issue there, as the skies fill with smoke, the brush has not burned there for almost a century, and so they've got a lot of fuel. And we're going to fuel the fires even more when you've got that ridge of high pressure bringing in that heat. Phoenix under an excessive heat warning again today. Las Vegas 107, Palm Springs 110. This is going to keep going in this weekend. We see another bump in temperatures. So we're going to be following this for the next week at least, Amy. All right, we know you will, Ginger. Thank you. Now to that breaking headline about Facebook under fire this morning over a new report about the company sharing your information with Apple, Microsoft, and more. Our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is here with the details. A lot of people want to know this morning, Rebecca. Absolutely, Amy. And this is more about privacy and questions around it surrounding Facebook. And according to the New York Times, before Facebook was widely available on your smartphones, the social network formed data sharing partnerships with at least 60 device makers, including top companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Samsung. And those features let phone and tablet makers access users' personal information, including things like relationship status, political leaning, and upcoming events. And what's even more troubling here is that according to the report, Facebook also let these companies access a user's friends data without their direct consent. That was even after declaring it would no longer share that information with third parties. One consultant likened the whole thing to putting locks on the doors and then giving your friends the keys. Yeah, that is fairly shocking. So what is Facebook saying this morning about this new report? So overnight, Facebook has responded, a vice president responding to the report in a blog post last night saying that the company has been winding down these partnerships since April and that these partners signed agreements that prevented people's Facebook information from being used for any other purpose than to recreate Facebook like experiences. They also dispute the report that companies could access users friends information without their permission and their argument here is this whole thing started before Facebook was widely used over a decade ago and they had to make these agreements with those partners in order to get it so that people could have it on their phones and tablets. Wow, but they're, so they're denying the whole friends report. They're saying yes, exactly. They're saying that they never allowed a user's friends data to be shared with any of these mm. partners. All right. I'm sure there's more to come about. Absolutely. A lot of people checking their phones this morning. We're going to go to the White House now and new questions about the president's legal strategy after the leak of a 20-page letter from Trump's legal team to Special Counsel Robert Mueller declaring broad power to shut down investigations, avoid questioning by prosecutors, and the president's top lawyer Rudy Giuliani even suggested to me that Trump has the power to pardon himself. Our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega has all the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. Hey, George, good morning to you. Even the president's own Republican allies are now sounding the alarm about this notion that the president can pardon himself, but Giuliani says it won't happen. The consequences would be disastrous. President Trump's legal team floating the controversial idea just as the Russia investigation is heating up. His personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, telling George the president can pardon himself, but he won't. Do you and the president's attorneys believe the president has the power to pardon himself? He pro he's not, but he probably does. I mean, he has no intention of pardoning himself, but he probably doesn't say he can't. Giuliani then called a self-pardon unthinkable, saying it would probably lead to immediate impeachment. 
But back in January, the president's legal team wrote a 20-page memo to special counsel Robert Mueller, obtained by the New York Times and ABC News, arguing broad presidential powers, saying the president could not have obstructed the investigation because, quote, by virtue of his position as the chief law enforcement officer, that would amount to him obstructing himself and that he could, if he wished, terminate the inquiry or even exercise his power to pardon if he so desired. The president's lawyers also strongly pushing back against a sit down with Mueller. Despite the president's repeated assertions that he wants an in-person interview. I would love to speak. I would love to. Nobody wants to speak more than me. Giuliani now says it's not looking likely. I have to just be honest. I mean, with leaning toward not. One of the reasons? Changing stories. Like the one about what really happened after that now infamous Trump Tower meeting with Don Jr., Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, and a Russian lawyer whom they were told had dirt on Hillary Clinton. Initially, the White House denied the president himself dictated a misleading statement about why his son took that meeting. He certainly didn't dictate. But in their letter, the president's lawyers for the first time concede he did indeed dictate the statement. This is the reason you don't let the president testify. Uh, if, you know, every, our recollection keeps changing. So if Mueller were to subpoena the president to testify, Giuliani says they would fight that in court. He says the Mueller team has everything it needs from documents to witnesses. They maintain, George, that Mueller does not need the president to wrap up this investigation. So see, on another front, we're going to see the first lady coming to a public event, uh, the Gold Star families at the White House for the first time today in three weeks. Yeah, George, uh, so for now, cameras are not expected to be inside this event, but we are told that she will be attending this event for those families here at the White House. It's been 24 days since we've laid eyes on the First Lady. Of course, she had that benign kid procedure for a benign kidney condition uh, last month. She didn't president accompany the president to Camp David this weekend. She's not going to the G7 this coming weekend or now the Singapore summit next week. Her office, George, says that she's been busy with meetings and planning for things like the uh, upcoming 4th of July celebration. Okay, Cecilia, thanks very much. Let's talk about the president's legal strategy now with our legal team, Dan Abrams and Chris Christie. And Dan, let me begin with you. The, the, Mayor Giuliani walked back several of the claims yesterday in that letter, but the letter was a pretty stunning assertion of presidential power. That's right, and we should be clear about that. Uh, the letter poses radical legal theories. Uh, number one, uh, the idea that if the president were subpoenaed, which I don't think he will be, uh, the fact that he could basically ignore the subpoena, that he wouldn't have to go, go, to, court go to, to court to even fight it. Uh, and I think that, that, that almost no one in the legal community would agree with that. There are Supreme Court cases that are relevant to this, not directly on point, but relevant, which would certainly indicate that the president likely would have to testify. Number two, on the obstruction of justice, yes, it's true that the president likely won't be indicted as a sitting president for anything. But the notion that he simply can't obstruct justice? Well, that was one of the articles of impeachment against Richard Nixon, against Bill Clinton. So, of course, a president can obstruct justice. Doesn't mean he'd get charged as a sitting president. Yeah, they went on to say he could shut down any investigation for any reason. And I guess the bottom line, Chris, of this 20-page letter to Mueller is don't hold your breath for an interview. Yeah, no, this is what we've been saying all along. There's not going to be an interview. I mean, there just can't be um, for a whole variety of reasons. There shouldn't be. And so the president, uh, as much as he may think he wants to testify um, and meet with Bob Mueller, he shouldn't. And, and I would say one other thing that, you know, what you're seeing now is a change in not only legal strategy, but in the quality of the legal team. Uh, that kind of letter indicates to you that the president was operating with a B team of legal representatives before this. Um, and now he's got people who really understand, I think, much better um, what his liabilities are um, and also what the opportunities are from both a legal and a public relations perspective to move this thing in his direction. And Dan, the president himself yesterday on Twitter opened up a new argument as well. He's now saying that he should have been told about the investigations, both about this FBI informer and the fact that Paul Manafort, his campaign chairman, was being investigated. As a candidate, he's saying he should have been told, right? This idea that the FBI should start disclosing to a presidential candidate anyone who they're investigating? I mean, the bottom line is, and, and I think Governor Christie can probably... Well, I see him shaking his uh, Well, no, I mean, I'm sure he can tell you that people probably warned him against Manafort and warned him about issues with Manafort having nothing to do with knowing on the FBI investigation. Listen, there, I, I did this for seven years, George, as you know, as U.S. attorney. I, I don't care what you were running for. We're not telling you. 
Uh, we're not we have we're not a, 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 a private investigation firm to help you with vetting your people who you employ in your campaign. Um, the fact is that the reason we operate that way is because in the Justice Department we're supposed to keep those things secret. We're legally bound to keep them secret unless and until we have some type of charges to announce. And people want it that way because you don't want every rumor and every investigation that's run down by the Justice Department out there in public. Finally, Dan, we also saw yesterday the president's team finally admitted that he actually dictated that Trump Tower statement, even though they never corrected the record in public. Well, and, and have, had repeatedly said publicly uh, that it wasn't dictated. This wasn't a sort of gray area. They said he wasn't involved. I mean, Jay Sekula told you. He wasn't involved in this. And now they're not just saying he was, they're saying he dictated it. Listen, you see two different things quickly, George. You, you see what happens privately with the lawyers hanging lanterns on the problems that are created by misstatements that come from the White House at times. Thank you both very much, Dan. You're going to be back later to talk about another president, Abe Lincoln, and your new book, Lincoln's Last Trial. Thanks. Go to yeah. that. Let's go to Michael. All right. Thank you so much, George. It may be the last trial of Lincoln, but it could be the last stand for the Cleveland Cavaliers. The finals last night, the Warriors, they're just two wins away from taking home the title for the second straight season. And that comes after Steph Curry set that NBA Finals record with nine three-pointers. ABC's TJ Holmes is in Oakland. And TJ, Steph was in MVP form last night. Stray, he put on a show and he was putting up shots that you and I wouldn't even try in the backyard during a game of horse. And once again, Cavs Warriors gave us something we've never seen before in NBA history. Ahead to dream on green, in for the, slam. the Golden State Warriors were back to championship form against the Cleveland Cavaliers in game two of the NBA Finals. Curry back in the corner, nice little fake, sets up another, got it again. Led by a barrage of shots from the outside. Thompson pulls up for three. It's Curry. Curry way outside. Another three. Steph Curry has set a finals record. Steph Curry hit nine three-pointers, a new record for an NBA Finals game. I never woke up and was like, all right, let's go get nine threes and get the record. Um, it's more so just about playing the game the right way. Superior offense right now by Steph Curry. Warrior fans greeted Cleveland Cavalier J.R. Smith with a standing ovation. After his own coach said he didn't know the score at the end of game one, which cost Cleveland a chance at victory. You get the feeling J.R. Smith the thought score. they had the lead. He no. didn't know the score. And overnight fans showed him no mercy, taunting him throughout the game with chance of MVP. James blows by, no help, and finishes. LeBron James had 29 for the Cavs and was on the court for all but five minutes of the game. The series now moves back east, and Cleveland is hoping a change of scenery will put an end to their so far shaky finals run. Just because we're going home don't mean we can relax. They prove they can win on someone else's floor and do it in, in, um, in any fashion. And this is not where they wanted to be, but the Cavs have been here before straight the past two NBA Finals. They left Oakland down 2-0. So we'll see you in Cleveland on Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much, TJ. Look like you got yourself a nice little tan there, my friend. <laughs> and you can see Game 3 of the NBA Finals Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC. And now we're going to go back to Ginger with more flooding in the East. Ginger? Yes, the Potomac River, several spots seeing major or moderate flooding in their forecast this week. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, though, the Select City, sponsored by Walgreens. Stretched. Smooth. Scarred. Soaked. The sun does not care, but we do. Walgreens beauty consultants are specially trained to know what works for the health of your unique skin. Walgreens, trusted since 1901. Now, all sun care products are buy one, get one 50% off. Flood warnings continue today. A lot of the rivers, the Potomac, areas north all the way south, down toward the Rappahannock, areas west, the Shenandoah, all the way areas east to the Severn River. Those rivers all running high for about the next 24 hours. So watch any standing water if you live near there. 75 breezy sunshine today, gorgeous day today. In fact, most of this week, folks, looking dry, which I love. Chance for us to dry out. Next rain chance Saturday afternoon. Coming up, the urgent search for a killer. Police trying to find this man believed to be linked to four murders in just the last week. And the demand for answers after a small dog mysteriously dies during an airport layover when we come back. We'll, I'll be waiting for you at 
Join T-Mobile and get Netflix.